Okay, so in this video, we're going to apply what we learned in the last video. So we learned about displacement, velocity, and acceleration, and we're going to do an example question with it, okay? This may look a bit weird, but it's, um, it's actually fine, okay? So we're going to say, I don't know, we have a particle here, and it's literally just moving back and forth, okay? And the way it moves back and forth, we don't know if it's going this way, that way, whatever, uh, is governed by this equation here. So a time t, so when you put in, say, at zero, then you just put in zero for all the t's and it'll tell you where the particle is. At time one, it'll tell you where the particle is. So if you just dot all those different times, you'll find which which way the particle is or where it's going, etc., etc. So that kind of makes sense. So that's just, it isn't a very good question in terms of real life applications, but it is good because it just gives you every single little thing. It makes you calculate them all. So it is, it'll hopefully make everything really, really clear. And then you can apply this to something that is real life. Okay, anyway, I'll just get started. Um, so it's asking for the initial position and velocity. So sorry, first position is just another way of saying displacement. Um, it's asking for the initial position and velocity. I'll use a different color. Um, no, not that one. That means at time t is equal to zero. So before kind of the, the thing has started moving, just that t is equal to zero, if that makes sense. Okay, so when, when nothing has happened yet. So what you're going to do is you're going to say s is equal to and you're going to put a zero in whatever you see a t. Zero squared plus 24 by zero minus three. Okay, they're all going to cancel because it's zero and you're going to be left with s is equal to minus three meters. Okay, so it starts at minus three meters, say, to the left. If we said this was a starting point, it actually starts to the left, which doesn't make sense, but anyway, that's our, that's our answer. Uh, and then the velocity. So we don't have a formula for the velocity, but we know we can find one quite easily. I'll do this in this color here. So if s is equal to t cubed minus 11t squared plus 24t minus 3, then the velocity is given by ds dt. Remember that from the last video? So ds dt, if we uh, differentiate this, it's going to give us the following thing here, plus 24. Does that make sense? And then now we just sub in 0 for everywhere we see t into this as well. So that's going to be equal to 3 by 0 squared minus 22 by 0 plus 24. And again, they're both going to go to 0. So we're going to be left with, and I'm going to write this just as v, okay? Because remember, v is the same as ds dt, its velocity is equal to 24 meters per second. And that's moving to the right, like I have that kind of arrow pointing. Yeah, because it's plus. 24 meters per second and again the meters per second isn't completely important you don't really need to add them in it is much better if you do and um, but I don't think you'll get marked down for not adding in the units okay but just meters meters per second and then acceleration is meters per second squared but we'll get to that when we get to it and um, I'll go part two so the velocity at any time so we've already kind of done that that just means calculate like what's a formula for the velocity and the formula for the velocity like we know is ds dt which we calculated in the line above, which is just 3t squared minus 22t plus 24. Yeah, uh, I'll move on quickly to the next one. I'll try to keep this video as short as possible. And uh, nobody likes watching long videos. What time is the, or what times uh, is the particle stationary? Okay, so stationary means when it's not moving. Okay, when it's not moving means when ds dt is equal to zero. Okay, so I'm gonna write that. ds dt is equal to zero, means it's not moving. That means that 3t squared minus 22t plus 24 is equal to zero. And take notice, it says what times is the particle stationary. And as we see here, we have a quadratic, so we're going to find two answers. So it's going to be stationary or not moving at two times, okay? So if we factorize this, we're going to get the following, 3t minus 4 and t minus 6 is equal to zero. Um, so that means that t is going to be equal to 4 over 3 seconds, or t is equal to 6 seconds. Little boxes around that. Okay, so that's part 3 done. What times is the particle stationary? And do part 4 now. What are the positions of the particle when it is stationary? Okay, so this one is handy enough. What we're going to do is we're going to get our position formula, which is, sorry, this green one here, I keep hopping around. And we're going to put in the times when it's stationary, yeah, which we just calculated in the other one, to find the positions when it's stationary. 
Does that make sense? So it's at these times, it's stationary, but we want to find where exactly the particle is, and we're going to use uh, our original formula for that. So S is equal to T cubed minus 11T squared plus 24T minus 3. I'm going to split this up into 2, so S is going to be equal to 4 over 3 cubed minus 11 by 4 over 3 squared, sorry that should be just 1, plus 24 by 4 over 3 minus 3, okay, and we work that out, so that will give us that S is equal to 11.81 meters, so when it stops the first time, so you see it stops twice, it's going to be 11.81 meters to the right, and the second time, we're going to see that it's S is equal to 6 cubed minus 11 by 6 squared plus 24 by 6 minus 3. And that would give us that S is equal to minus 39 meters. There we go. So the second time it stops, it's way over to the left. Okay, does that make sense? So they're the positions uh, where it stops moving. Okay, hopefully it's all making sense so far. Um, part five is the acceleration at any time. Okay, so remember the acceleration is d2s dt. So first I'm just going to write ds dt is equal to 3t squared minus 22t plus 24. And then I'll do this in purple d2s dt squared. So it's the acceleration. I'm going to write is equal to a is going to be equal to 6t minus 22. Okay, and that's all it is for question five. Uh, and I'm just going to have to rub these out to make space for question six. So just uh, take a picture of them or something, and I'm going to rub these out, and I'll keep going. Okay, so I've rubbed that out. Uh, we're going to look at part six now, which says when the acceleration, sorry, when the acceleration is zero, what is the velocity and the position? So first we're going to have to find when the acceleration is zero. So if we remember d2s, dt squared is equal to 6t minus 22, okay, and that's equal to 0, as we're told, uh, and that'll leave us that 2 is equal to uh, 3.667 seconds. Okay, uh, and we're looking for the velocity and the position, so I'll actually do the position first. I'll do this like this, so if s is going to be equal to, and remember this is it's going to be 3.667 cubed minus 11 by 3.667 squared plus 24, 3.667 minus 3. And that will give us that S is equal to minus 13.59 meters. Okay, kind of an awkward number, but this just tells us that when its acceleration is zero, and um, when it's not getting any faster or slower, that the distance is there, that position, displacement is that, okay? And the last bit, I'll do in red, that ds dt, or the velocity, okay, is equal to v, is going to be equal to 3 by 3.667 squared minus 22 by 3.667 plus 24, okay? If you work this out, it's going to be equal to minus sixteen point three three meters per second. Let me just throw a V in there, and there we have it. Okay, and there's one little quick point I want to make that the velocity isn't zero when the acceleration is zero. Does that make sense? So when the when the acceleration is zero, it can still be moving. It's just not getting faster or slower. Also, we didn't calculate it, but when the when the oh we, I don't have it here anymore, but when the velocity is zero. Okay, when it's not moving, it can actually still be accelerating, even though it doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, it it can just believe me. Basically, that when it's changing, yeah, basically when when velocity is zero, it can still be accelerating. So if you do get an answer like that, don't be too alarmed. Uh, that can happen. So hopefully that video made sense there. So it's just about a particle going back and forwards according to this formula here, and it was just showing you all the different ways of getting the displacement, the velocity, and the acceleration. But uh, now that you know this, you can apply it to a more complicated video and more complicated question, kind of a real life question. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it.